As any schoolboy or schoolgirl knows, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, June 28, 1914, was the match that touched off the conflagration of World War I. My name is Indy Nidell, and this channel, The Great War, follows World War I week by week exactly 100 years later. First, I'd like to talk a little about Franz Ferdinand himself, so here's a very brief bio. He was born in 1863, one of Austria's 70 archdukes. It wasn't called Austria-Hungary yet. Now, he became very wealthy just before he reached his teens, when his cousin died and he was chosen to inherit a vast estate. Another death in 1889 changed his destiny enormously, the suicide of his cousin, Crown Prince Rudolf. This left Ferdinand's father heir to the throne of Austria-Hungary, but he immediately renounced his position, leaving Franz Ferdinand next in line to rule the empire. He was still in this position when he died, by which time Emperor Franz Joseph was 84 years old and Ferdinand was 50. Now, if you read pretty much any bio, long or short, on Franz Ferdinand, you'll discover that not a whole lot of people actually liked him. Well, except his wife, the Duchess Sophia. She was a Bohemian aristocrat, but without actual royal blood, so the imperial house made certain that neither Sophia nor any of her children could ever inherit the throne. This also meant they weren't much accepted by the Austrian aristocracy, in spite of his position as the next emperor, and a lot of people went out of their way to treat the Archduke and Duchess like crap. One other thing that every bio is sure to mention is Ferdinand's passion for hunting. He apparently recorded over 250,000 creatures killed in his 50 years on Earth. Now, I suppose that's really neither here nor there, but what is here and there are Franz Ferdinand's beliefs. He was very conservative and, let's just call it, unenlightened to be polite. He hated the Hungarians, he thought the Slavs were less than human, and he actually referred to Serbs as pigs. He was also very strongly Catholic, which carried with it the anti-Jewish, anti-Jesuit baggage of the times. He did love his wife, though, with a great passion, and the preservation of the Austrian Empire. And that is something we'll come back to in a few minutes. Before that, let's meet his assassin, Gavrilo Princip. Princip was a member of the Young Bosnians, one of several violent secret societies in the Balkans, and one who decided to kill Franz Ferdinand when he announced his June visit to Bosnia in March 1914. Okay, so in May, Princip and two associates went to Belgrade, Serbia, where they were provided with four pistols and six bombs by the Black Hand, and Princip had some shooting practice in a city park. Now, that's not especially relevant. I just thought I'd like to point out that people had shooting practice in city parks back then. So, at the end of May, Princip and company took an eight-day journey to Sarajevo, planning to kill the Archduke. It's important to note here that the Austrian authorities and the Archduke himself were aware of the danger of some sort of murder attempt, since these sort of things were pretty commonplace in the empire, and especially in the Balkans. Now, here's a quote from Franz Ferdinand the day he began his journey to Sarajevo and his car overheated. Our journey starts with an extremely promising omen. Here our car burns, and down there they will throw bombs at us. So, the evening before they were supposed to arrive in Sarajevo, right? Franz Ferdinand and Sofia surprised everyone by turning up early, just on impulse, and they had a really nice time wandering around the town, which was a pretty exotic place back then. And later that evening came one of the great foreshadowing moments of all time. A member of the Bosnian parliament who had urged Ferdinand and Sofia to cancel the whole trip for reasons of safety was presented to Sofia, and she said this, Things do not always turn out the way you say they will. Wherever we have been, everyone, down to the last Serb, has greeted us with such great friendliness, politeness, and true warmth that we are very happy with our visit. Okay, so far so good. But then the guy, whose name was Sunarik, answered this, Your Highness, I pray to God that when I have the honor of meeting you again tomorrow night, you can repeat those words. Then they had a big banquet that night, and late the next morning, coincidentally their 14th wedding anniversary, the Archducal motorcade left Sarajevo station. No fewer than seven young Bosnian hitmen were deployed on the town's bridges, one of which the Archduke had to cross. Now one of the young Bosnians threw a bomb at the Archduke's car, but it bounced off his hood before it exploded, wounding two of the Archduke's men. The motorcade drove on to the town hall, and they listened to a bunch of the usual speeches. And then, after that, Franz Ferdinand changed his plans. He decided to visit the men who'd been hurt by the bomb to see if they were okay. So he wanted to go toward the hospital. 
But there was a lot of confusion over the new route and who'd been told what and who hadn't been told what. So when the Archduke's driver turned off the Apple key, the general sharing Ferdinand's car told the driver, no, no, back up and continue on Apple key. So the driver stopped the car because it had no functioning reverse gear. And he stopped it right next to where Gavrilo Princip was standing. So Princip raised his pistol and fired twice from a distance of only a few feet away. Sophie died instantly and Franz Ferdinand's last words were, Sophie, Sophie, don't die. Stay alive for our children. Franz Ferdinand died shortly after. Now it's pretty amazing when you think about it that this whole enterprise could have possibly succeeded. I mean, it was so incredibly amateurish. And had the Austrian authorities taken any precautions whatsoever, well, I mean, think about it. There are loads of people who think the Black Hand had more to do with it, but you'd think they'd plan a little better, or heck, plan at all. Anyhow, here were the immediate results. Word of the assassination spread instantly throughout Europe, and in Bosnia, by the end of July, more than 5,000 Serbs had been jailed many of whom were later hanged when the war broke out. Princip was put in prison, being 27 days too young to receive the death penalty under Austrian law. Now, there were one or two European leaders who were seriously worried about the political consequences of the act, but most of Europe reacted by thinking it was more of the same. The usual Balkan business, another Balkan killing. There was very little mourning, even in Vienna, for the unloved Franz Ferdinand, and his funeral service only lasted 15 minutes. But there was one thing that became apparent only years later. You see, Princip, or the Serbs, or the Black Hand, or whoever you like to say was behind the killing, really, really, really got the wrong guy. Franz Ferdinand, for all his talk about Serbs being pigs or Russian autocracy being a good model for the future, for all his backward and outdated beliefs, had strong opinions on two very important things. One, in contrast to most of the empire, he was absolutely against any war with Russia and stated repeatedly that he would do anything in his power to prevent it. And two, since he put the empire above his personal beliefs, and to make the empire work once again, he was sympathetic to the idea of making the bipartite state of Austria-Hungary into a tripartite state of Austria, Hungary, and a union of the Slavic peoples as the third part of the empire. So when a Serb killed Franz Ferdinand, it was a killing that was not only against Serbian interests, but since the Austrian Empire used the killing as a justification to invade Serbia, even if it meant war with Russia, Princip killed the one and only person in the empire who was determined and able to prevent that war, Franz Ferdinand. This was episode number three of our Great War Prelude to War specials. Now, if you missed the first two episodes, you can click here to watch both episode one and episode two.